So today we're going to be going ahead and trying to get a little bit more steering angle out of the 240SX. So to get more steering angle, what most people do is either get completely forged knuckles like Wisefab or like GK Tech or PBM. Like they can make a completely forged knuckle for the front of the car and it gives you more steering angle. Or what people will do is take their stock steering um, knuckles, chop like an inch out of the like arm that connects to the tie rod, weld it back together, and then that will allow you to get more steering angle. Um, also, on the 240s and the S chassis, you can put um, steering rack spacers, and that lets you just get more angle just out of the steering rack without actually changing anything in the car. And with both of those setups, people either get um, extended lower control arms, they'll cut them, um, box them, and add like one or two inches to that just to give them more clearance in the fender well, or they'll get a completely forged lower control arm, and a lot of companies sell those as well. But what I'm going to be doing is a little bit different. What we got here is the GK Tech um, Roll Center Correction Kit, and um, I kind of was just like looking on the internet and I just like found this. I couldn't find that much about it, but pretty much what it does, it bolts your factory steering knuckle, which is good. You don't have to cut and weld anything. It bolts straight onto that. Then you connect your ball joint and your low control arm to this and your tie rod to this, and it should, in theory, give me a little bit more steering angle. Um, as well as correcting your roll center. The downside of this, it's pretty much the same thing in terms of what your steering is going to feel like. It's pretty much the same thing as adding like a one inch wheel spacer to your um, front wheel. because That's pretty much what it does. It's just pushing the entire knuckle out. It's not changing the axis on which um, the steering happens, which is what would happen if you got extended lower control arms. But these things are like 200 and something dollars, 250, 200 dollars, something like that. Um, and I thought it would be interesting. I didn't really find that much information about it on the internet, so I figured might as well get them. I'll let you guys know if they're any good, and we'll do that. As well, to go along with this, um, I did get some offset rack spacers, and that pretty much is so when you're at full lock with something like this that's changing where your tie rod connects to the knuckle, you're not getting it binding up, because that's what will happen if you use your steering rack factory location. It kind of like binds up and gets weird at full lock. Um, also, you can like cut your subframe or whatever, remount the steering rack like in a different spot, but that's kind of like, there's no reason to do that. People said the offset rack spacers will do just fine. Some people are like, it's going to tear your steering rack apart, it's putting the wrong stress on it. But it's like, no, it's not, it's fine, don't worry about it. Now, the offset rack spacer is about an inch long, and this thing moves the um, place where the tie rod connects about a half an inch closer. So the factory S13 inner and outer tie rods were not going to work for this because they're just too long. We need something that's about an inch and a half-ish shorter but still have adjustability. Um, I guess I could have chopped my tie rods and welded them together but there's no reason to do that. I got new tie rods and they're not that expensive and this is definitely just a better long-term solution to the problem. So this is the length of a factory um, S13 inner and outer tie rod set up. I got a set of the Z33 inner tie rods right here, and these are a bit shorter than the factory S13 tie rods. And um, they have the same thread pitch on the side that goes into the steering rack, but on the side that connects to the outer tie rod is a different thread pitch, so I had to get a set of S14 outer tie rods, and these things will go together perfectly with the Z33 inners. When you screw them together, at the end of the day, you end up with a tie rod combo that is about an inch and a half shorter than stock. So this is the factory S13 inner and outer tie rod, and then this is the Z33 inner with the S14 outer, and you can see um, this should be about the right length. It's about inch and a half-ish shorter, but it still does have some adjustability, so we'll be able to get, go shorter or longer if we need to on the new um, tie rod setup, so this should allow us to align our car pretty accurately now. So the steering rack that's in the car has kind of been giving me trouble for like the last year and a half. Um, it's definitely been like destroyed for like a year and a half, I just got new boots for it like a year ago and then it, that made it stop leaking because it was just leaking tons of fluid. Um, I got new boots that kind of solved the problem, just contained the fluid that was leaking out. At the last drift event it pretty much just burst and then I like was playing with it and then it just dumped out a ton of fluid. It's just dumping because it's like, it just completely destroyed, like the seals in it are just destroyed so I um, need to get a new steering rack. So what we have here is a um, new steering rack, this is out of a 94 vert I think. Um, I mean, the guy said it had 80,000 miles on it. I guess I believe him. I don't really know. I don't. I just. It was the only one I could find near here, and it, the guy wasn't asking that much money for it. So I figured I'd pick it up, and it wasn't leaking anything. So it'll definitely be better than the stock one. 
Um, cause uh, getting a remanufactured one's like 300 bucks and you gotta send your steering rack back or they'll charge like more money for like, it just don't want to deal with it. So, um, new steering rack here and it should be good. And he also did give me a set of internet or tie rods for the car it was on, but obviously I won't be using those. So, um, we'll be good with our new tie rods. So now really the only thing I'm waiting for is the offset rack spacers and phase two motor trend went ahead and sent us some out special thanks to them. Of course, check them out, um, offset rack spacers, they'll really save your butt when you're trying to get more steering angle out of your car if you don't want to relocate your steering rack, which is completely unnecessary because they make offset rack spacers. Um, but we still do have a ton of work to do, so I'm going to start working on the car right now. I've already done a little bit of work. Um, I went ahead and took one um, knuckle off the car just to figure out what it would take, and I'm really glad I did it before because it turned out to be a huge pain in the butt and I had to go get some new things to take it apart. So this is the um, passenger side of the car and you can see um, this ball joint is kind of completely destroyed, the boot on it is just destroyed um, and at some point I'll have to get a new um, ball joint or just a whole new lower control arm with a ball joint in it um, but for now I'm not going to be messing with changing out the ball joint because that's not what I'm trying to do right now. Um, so just looking at the um, knuckle and the lower control arm, there's a taper here that keeps the um, knuckle to the control arm. You gotta break that taper. Um, I smashed on the other one with a hammer. Couldn't get anything off. Um, I didn't want to bend anything so I kind of just stopped um, and I figured out the easiest way to do this. So I went to Harbor Freight and I got this thing and it's what I don't even know. Is it a ball joint press? Ball joint puller? I don't even know. Press I guess because it presses together. It's pretty nice. You just put it on top, one on the bottom and you can pretty much just tighten this thing down and it just broke the taper instantly. It didn't, I didn't have to get like one of those pickle fork things and destroy the ball joint to get them apart. This thing, 18 bucks, it saved me so much time. I seriously did it in 30 seconds and I had been smashing on stuff with a hammer for like an hour. This thing, 18, so worth it. So we got this whole situation off here. You can see the steering rack, I really gotta take it off. It's just leaking a lot. Um, at the last drift event, I just used, threw some duct tape on this boot so it would stop leaking. So I gotta also take this steering rack out and that's kinda gonna be a huge pain in the butt, but we'll get to it. So for the new steering rack, I'm gonna go ahead and put the offset rack spacers on this thing when they come. I'm not gonna put the steering rack in the car until I put the spacers on. There's really no reason to do it. I don't have any rush to do that. Um, and it'll be a lot easier to do when it's not in the car. So I can go ahead and take the other one out whenever I want and then I'll just be able to slap this thing in uh, when I get the spacers and I'm ready to throw everything back together. So now I'm going to go ahead and pull the um, steering rack out, it's pretty simple. So I'm going to need to get a new O2 sensor because this one's pretty messed up and it's just like, we'll just pretend not look at it. But just got to disconnect the steering column right here with this little bolt. Um, I'm not worrying about keeping anything centered because I'm going to have to recenter the steering rack when I put the um, offset rack spacers on and get everything aligned right. So I'm not worrying about anything being centered right now. So we're just going to disconnect this bolt here and then the high pressure and low pressure power steering lines um, down there. Then we'll be able to unbolt it and be able to wiggle that thing out. Crashing, hit a wall. Right now, I need a miracle. Hurry up now, I need a miracle. Stranded, reaching out. I call your name, but you're not around. I say your name, but you're not around. I just threw a bunch of duct tape on at the drift event just so it would stop leaking and I could drive. Um, but that's, yeah, it's pretty ghetto. And then um, I'm gonna go ahead and take off these little AN fittings here for my um, braided power steering line so I can throw them on a new steering rack so we can run our uh, braided power steering lines on there. The new rack and tie rods are definitely gonna feel a little bit stiffer like on center with steering. Just like, just look at this ball joint, like how loose it is. And like, I mean, just look at this one. It's just like, it's actually broken in half. You can just see it's just like, just like dry. It's just like, it's like not supposed to be like that. It's just all loopy. But like, this one, it's like super stiff. I can't even move it with my finger. Maybe that's bad. I'm gonna go ahead and wash these AN fittings off before I jam them on a nuke steering rack just to make sure there's no like 
garbage because I know like I put them on a the table and just like tons of rocks and stuff in them. So it would probably be better if that stuff wasn't going through the power steering system. Okay, so now we're going to be using the ball joint remover tool on this side. So last time I just put the bolt on like flush with the nut. I don't know, I just do this to make it, makes me feel better about what I'm doing. Um, then you just, I'm not even gonna try and disconnect it from the coil over this time because I really don't think I need to do that. So you can just jam this thing down there. Jam this thing up here. We just spin this. We take our three quarter inch wrench, and just tighten it, just keep going until it pops off or something happens. This tension makes me very nervous. Okay, I'm gonna go get a socket. This is too slow for me. I need to just happen quickly. Ooh, did it just happen? Yo, it just happened. I wasn't even here. It's sick. We can go ahead and. Well, maybe we can't pull this. We can't even pull this nut off anymore. Eighteen dollars. This tool. Buy this now. Like, yes. And like, we didn't even need to pull it off the coil over. That's so nice, and this will be easy on this side. Maybe we actually want to, oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. If I can lift it up or lower it. Ah, oh, there we go. You just have that dangle over there, but like, look at that messed up ball joint. Oh yeah, I can just hear all the rocks in there. Probably should like, get a new one. But that's all for the future. I'm still like working on Getting the everything in. I haven't done anything yet. Like the internet said, like on their on GK Tech's website, they said I'm gonna get 60 degrees of steering angle on my leading wheel. Probably gonna hit the bump stop. I feel like there are gonna be so many clearance issues down here. Like crap. Like I don't even know. I guess once we get everything on here, we'll see like what we need to do. But for now, I'm hopeful that everything will be perfect and I won't have to change anything else. So we just got our offset rack spacers in from Phase 2 Motor Trend, and these will allow us to get a little bit more steering lock, we'll be able to take advantage of everything the steering rack can do. Um, and as well, the move where the tie rod attaches to the steering rack, it moves it forward about, I don't know, inches, not even an inch. It moves it forward a little bit, it's the same thing as moving your steering rack forward, but it's a lot easier. Um, and that pretty much is so like, since we have sort of a modified knuckle, when we're at full lock, the steering won't bind up, because that's what some people have as an issue. Um, when they just run like normal rack spacers or no rack spacers. So of course special thanks to Phase 2 Motor Trend. You can go check these things out. Link will be in the description down below. So the offset rack spacers have to bolt into the steering rack and to do that they come with this um, this bolt here and it's pretty much just like an, a hex allen key on the top and it's like a huge allen key. Like there's, I, don't have, I don't have any allen key that could fit in it. Um, I went to like Home Depot, Pet Boys, Advanced Auto Part, Lowe's, Ace. None of them had a an Allen key or an Allen socket that could like fit in something that was this large. Um, I can order one on the internet, but I don't really want to wait for that. So I'm going to take a bolt that's a little bit larger than this hole. I'm going to grind it down until it's the perfect shape to fit into here. And I'm going to go ahead and weld another bolt onto the other end of that. So I pretty much make my own like Allen key thing so I can get this nice and tight in the steering rack. Um, so we don't have any issues with the um, tie rods falling out and losing steering while we're driving down the road at 140 miles an hour. So Space is pretty easy. Um, there's one for the left side, one for the right side. They're different. Um, the steering rack in the car, I'm pretty sure um, it's not the exact same as the later 240 steering rack, so it's a little bit different. And I think you might have to cut these tabs off um, if you're going to go ahead and put the offset rack spacers on a earlier 
um, 240 steering rack. I think it's like some point in 1990 they switched the steering rack, but this one's I think out of a 93 or a 94, so we don't have any issues with that. Um, so the one for the right side, one for the left side, they're different. Make sure they're, you've got the right ones. Make sure they're pointing the right way. Um, so go ahead and pop one on. Pretty easy. You want to put Loctite in. So we're going to go ahead and throw some Loctite in here because we don't want um, anything in here to be falling apart. Um, with the factory tie rods, it has like this little piece here. It's like bent around it that keeps them from falling out. But obviously, we have to bend this to get these tie rods out. So we can't use them anymore. So we're going to use some blue Loctite. Um, this stuff will be fine for this. I'm going to go ahead and squirt some of this in here. And I'll be able to circulate around once we get our, um, whatever it's called, our rack spacer on the inside. So, spacer on. Don't want to cross thread anything. Get our fancy new tool. This thing's in here, tight, locked tight. We're good on this side. And then we're going to just go ahead and um, repeat the same process for the uh, passenger side and go ahead and put the tie rods on and then we'll slap them in the car. So it turns out I was not paying attention at all and I put both of the spacers on backwards. So we're going to go ahead and try and take those off real quick before the Loctite starts to settle in there. And we should be fine for uh, switching them around. So right now I'm going to go ahead and thread in our um, 350Z uh, inner tie rods and S14 outer tie rods. I'm not going to keep them tight or anything. I'm actually going to pull the um, tie rod end off because we need to slide the steering rack boot on. But actually before we put this on, we want to throw some Loctite in here too just because we want everything staying in one piece when we're driving. So my adjustable wrench can't get large enough to fit around the little grippy thing on the inner tie rod. So went ahead, took the pipe wrench, cranked that thing on with some thread lock, lock tight stuff. And now we're going to be good to go. And like, just like the ball joints in this, in the, in the tie rod is so like tight, like the other ones are like all goopy. Look, like, oh, this one's not goopy. So I guess this, that, that tie rod wasn't actually in my steering rack. The ones in my steering rack are like super goopy. I think this is gonna make the steering feel a little bit tighter. Everything's like all nice and new. All right, so I don't know, this boot's kind of be like, oh, dude, you gotta take this on too. When the boot's on here, it's gonna sit kind of weird because like this offset rack spacer is like moving like the actual tie rod like to a different spot and it's like kind of like awkward and it's probably gonna like tear the boot apart because it's at a super awkward angle. And this boot is not designed for tie rods and wine, it's kind of like, there we go. We're gonna go ahead and throw a zip tie on right on the outside, just to get that all nice and tight. Oh man. So now we're gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing on the other side, and then we'll be ready to throw the rack back in the car. So we've got the entire steering rack done, we've got the boots on, we've got the tie rod ends on. Um, nothing's tight yet, so we still need to get it on the car and do some sort of alignment because everything's gonna be messed up. We're gonna have to recenter the rack, but um, right now we're gonna go ahead and throw in the roll center correction kit, and this thing is what this is supposed to be part of what's going to be getting us our increased steering angle. Um, so we're really just going to go ahead and throw these things on, bolt straight onto the knuckle, pretty straightforward. Um, so there we go, we're going to go ahead and throw these things in the car right now. So the roll center correction kit isn't that difficult to install. I think definitely the hardest part was removing everything, taking everything apart. Um, as we're putting it together, we pretty much just thread these studs into the holes in the roll center correction kit. Pop this little thing on here, over the tie rod side, and then um, we'll go ahead and bolt it up the knuckle first. So when everything's flush, you just start bolting stuff back on. Throw this nut on top of the um, ball joint side of the roll center correction kit. Just get it on there and we'll torque it down later. And then go ahead and throw the tie rod side nut on. So let's get these uh, nuts a little snug on here just so nothing's moving around. So we just stick an Allen key on the bottom so that stuff doesn't move. And we're just going to get this a little bit tighter on here. I'm not going to torque it down just yet because there's really no need to do that until everything's on the car and in, in a better position. Oh, I think I'm losing my mind now. Now the roll center correction kit has been secured to the knuckle. So now we pop this little cone shaped thing on the ball joint on the car. Then we just 
jeez, this is heavy. Pop that back on there. And then somewhere there's a nut that holds everything together. Found our nut, so just pop a little washer on top here and then pop the factory nut back in the ball joint. All right, so this side's done, um, except for, of course, hooking up the steering rack, tie rod stuff, because the steering rack's still out of the car. We're gonna have to throw that in after. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Now we're gonna go ahead and pop the steering rack back in the car. Yeah. I need ya, I need ya, I need you right now. Yeah, I need you right now. So don't let me, don't let me, don't let me down. I think I'm losing my mind now. It's in my head, darling, I hope that you'll be here when I need you the most. So Okay, so we got the steering rack in, we got the um, roll center correction kit on, offset rack spacers in. Um, everything's fine, so now I'm just going to go ahead and recenter the steering rack. And um, it's a pretty simple concept. What you pretty much want to do is um, figure out how many turns the steering wheel can get from lock to lock. So this is a little bit less than three and a half rotations. So what we're going to do is cut that in half, call it 1.75. Um, so we're just gonna, we're, so now we're at full lock to the right, so we're just gonna spin the steering wheel 1.75 times, and then we're gonna go ahead and bolt everything up as if, um, the, the car's straight, like we're gonna, that's gonna be, in theory, the steering rack going straight. That's 1.75-ish right here. Like, it's not gonna be perfect, we're still gonna have to do a little bit of changing stuff. So everything's not completely tightened down yet, but like, just looking at how much steering lock you get, but like, everything's rubbing, like, this is just bad, like, I get stuck on the inner fender well, but like, and this is how much steering angle we get hitting the bump stops with the um, tie rod. So like, we could grind that down. We could probably get more steering lock because we're not bottoming out the steering rack right now. So there's op there's opportunity for more angle, which we probably don't need, but probably gonna have to go for it. But like, the clearance issues are just like huge, and the car still isn't perfectly aligned. Like you can still see everything's a little loose in there still, but like, I mean, this is pretty nice. Gotta say. Fat steering lock. And most of these issues would go away if I took the wheel spacer off, but then it wouldn't look as cool, so we're gonna go ahead and leave the wheel spacer on for now. Um, and I'm just gonna like try and fix some of these clearance issues. And, oh god. And one, like the roll center correcting kit actually lowers the car even more. Just because it changes where the knuckle mounts to the um, lower control arm and it pushes it up. So it pushes the entire like steering situation up. So like everything's just lower. So I'm going to go ahead and lift the front of the car up maybe an inch and a half right now. And I know that won't look great, but it's going to make everything not rub as much. And that's really what I'm looking for right now. And then eventually we can work on the actual look of the car. this way it's just like hits the fender so hard so I guess I'm just gonna start trimming the fender with the angle grinder to make it fit so just to get a little bit more steering angle we're gonna go ahead and remove the bump stops from the front lower control arms and then weld in a little bit of, of a plate that will give us a little bit more steering angle um, so the tie rod won't hit the um, bump stop as soon. Now I need a miracle. Hurry up now, I need a miracle. All right, so that used to be the bump stop. Pretty much just cut it off, and now we're just gonna like weld a plate in here because we really don't want the um, tie rod or the lower or the roll center correction kit to be smashing into the lower control arm. We want something else in between. Um, I'm gonna see if I have anything to weld in here. We might have to run out to Lowe's or Home Depot. Pick up a little piece of metal to slide in right there. Stranded, reaching out. I call your name, but you're not around. I say your name, but you're not around. I need ya, I need ya, I need you right now. Yeah, I need you right now. So don't let me, don't let me, don't let me down. So this is part of one of the factory bump stops. Um, of course, we chopped these things off because they're limiting our steering angle quite a bit. Not, I mean, maybe just a few degrees, but we want to get the most steering wheel we can. 
Um, and to replace these, um, some people, I guess, just cut them off and then they just have the tie rod smashed in the lower control arm. That didn't seem too great, so I'm gonna go ahead and just like weld this little bit of plate over where the bottom stop would be, um, just so there's something that the um, tie rod will hit so it doesn't just keep smashing the lower control arm. Um, it should be good. Um, it's not as thick as the bump stop, but I'm not really worried about that. We're just going to chop a little bit out here. Just weld it on both sides. Um, it should be in there. We shouldn't have any issues. Um, if we do, we can always change it because it's not like I'm going to be t attaching it. Welds are always going to be breakable in this case. So go ahead and get started with this. pop this thing on right here and then when it's welded up when the tie rods connected to something and it's like steering and it's at full lock it's in it will probably hit like there but it doesn't hit there because it's not like actually at lock I'm happy with how the welds came out. Um, I couldn't really heat them up as I as much as I wanted to because I started melting like bushing. I started melting the bushing on the sway bar end link, and I mean it's not that hard to replace, but there's no reason to melt it. Um, this weld was fine. It's not like this has to hold that much weight. It's just so like when the um, tie rod like comes in and, and where it would normally hit the bumps, that will just hit this instead. Um, and I'm really happy with it. It's definitely gonna do what we need it to do. It's in there, and if, when I need to cut it off, I'll definitely be able to cut it off um, if I need to. But um, it's solid in there. There's nobody by my side. I need ya, I need ya, I need you right now. Yeah, I need you now right we're gonna go ahead and weld in the same plant on the other side, grind everything down, get everything nice and good, weld it on, and we'll be good to go. Slap stuff back together and we'll get mad steering angle and do sick drifts. So I just reset the steering rack, um, did my best to align the car. It might not be perfectly aligned or the steering rack might not be perfectly centered. I might get like one or two degrees of more lock on one side than the other, but that doesn't really matter to me. I'm gonna go ahead and throw some cotter pins in the um, tie rod end where they connect to the uh, roll center correction kit so they don't fall out. Make sure everything's tight. And I'm just gonna drop the car down and kind of like drive it because I kind of like want to just feel how it feels with all this new stuff in it. And I haven't driven it in like a month because it's been not driving around for that long. So get everything together and then we'll pull it out of the garage. Oh, so this is the result of the steering angle modifications. Look at that poke though. And this is all the roll center correction kit pushing the tire out because it just moves where everything mounts and everything's just like offset. Like, look at that poke. Like, mm. So after all the stuff we've done, I really want to figure out how much steering angle we can get out of the car now. And the car might not be perfectly aligned yet, so it might be a, a degree or two off, like, but it doesn't really matter. Like, we're going to be able to see if there's more steering angle, and we'll see how much we can get. So I've got a protractor on these two pieces of tape. And it looks like I'm getting about 52 degrees of steering angle, which is kind of disappointing. All right, so GK Tech says with offset rack spacers and um, whatever, the roll center correction kit, you'll get 60 degrees of steering angle. I don't see how that's possible unless you like, took a huge notch out of your lower control arm, which kind of seems ridiculous. Um, I, I don't know, maybe that's what they mean. But I think I would have gotten more steering angle if I had just gotten like steering rack spacers as opposed to the roll center correction kit. Because the issue I'm having is the edge of the roll center correction kit is just smashing into the where the my new bump start stops are on the lower control arm. So I think I would have gotten more angle if I'd just done steering rack spacers. And then like if I hadn't spent like that 200 and something bucks on the roll center correction kit, I could have had my knuckles cut and weld and I could have gotten even more angle. But instead I... Oh my god. So this is just kind of like my experience. I mean obviously if I could notch my lower control arms, that would give me a little bit more angle. But... Realistically, I really think the thing I should have done was um, have my knuckles cut and welded or bought some knuckles that were already cut and welded and done the steering rack spacers because if I had done that, I would have gotten a lot more steering angle 
and then I could have notched my lower control arm and gotten a little bit more angle. But like all things considered, this much steering angle with a stock KA is more than I'll ever need. Like there's no way I'll be able to hold a drift um, with like that much angle, like at full lock. So it's not like I need it, but I'm just kind of like for how much money I spent, I could have put it in a better direction. I was just kind of curious about the roll center correction cut. I couldn't really figure that much about it, but I kind of see why now. Um, if you're trying to correct your roll center, this thing is perfect because like my roll center is perfect now, but steering angle although they say it will do stuff you're really better off just getting like rack spacers or just um having your knuckles cut and welded in my opinion but i mean who am i really so if you guys did enjoy the video make sure to like comment and subscribe and i will see you in the next video <laughs>